IFLTAs. As I promised, here's a video on how to pack and what to do in the airport and to try to solve all these complicated issues about luggage. Now, you might wonder why I'm dressed like this and not wearing a suit, but seriously, who packs their luggage while they're dressed up? Nobody. So here I am in my tennis outfit. And anyway, I'm going to play tennis after I finish this video, so it's okay. So what I want to explain first of all is that all the information that you need about your luggage should be printed on your ticket. So if you look at your ticket, you should see something like 30 kilos or two pieces of luggage. So why is there this difference? First of all, some airlines care about the number of pieces of luggage you bring. So for example, you can bring one, some, some only allow you to bring one, some will allow you to bring two. That means two that you check in. That's different from what you carry on the plane. Others care about the weight. And so, for example, this can only weigh 30 kilos or 23 kilos. Usually it's written on the ticket. For example, Qatar Air gives you 30 kilos. Uh, Egypt Air, I believe, gives you 23. So you need to look. Some airlines allow you to take two, and some only allow you to take one. For the airlines that care about the number of pieces and not the weight, they care about the dimensions. So for example, in most airlines in the United States, they care about the pieces. And so they would say this can only, can, they measure it from here to here, and here to here, and here to here, and then they tell you that it can only be up to a certain size. Now that goes for both the ones that you check in and the ones that you take on the plane. Um, and it will be written on your ticket. But just to give you an example, this is too big to take on the plane. It's just too big. They won't let you take it on. But this is okay. So you just look on the ticket to see what the size is. Normally, to bring on the plane, if I have, it has to weigh, it has to weigh um, no more than eight kilos. And so that's a, a, a rule of thumb that you can use. If you look online to buy luggage, the luggage that you can carry on the plane is called cabin luggage. So it will say that you can bring it into the cabin. The reason why it has to be small is that when you get on the plane, you're going to put it up in a compartment over your seat. If it's huge like this, it won't fit in the compartment above your seat, so you won't be able to fit it on the plane. Now, when you go on the plane, you're normally allowed to take two things with you. One is something like this. So this would go on your back, and then you'd be allowed to carry something else like your laptop or a messenger bag or a shoulder bag of some sort. So you could have two things on your, uh, on your person. If you choose to buy something at duty free, you can also bring that on the plane with you. So that's it. So this is a normal size bag. You might even be able to take this and this together, because it's two pieces. Now, uh, for packing, there are a couple of things that you need to know. One is, there are things that you cannot take on the plane. For example, for telephones, you cannot take a Samsung 7 because of the lithium battery issue. So if you have a Samsung 7, don't bring it with you on the plane. As far as other phones go, there shouldn't be any problem. Another thing you can't carry on the plane is liquids. Liquids, except small uh, quantities, cannot be taken on the plane. So, for example, shampoo of this size or a cream of this size 
will be taken away from you. They will take it away from you in the airport before you get on the plane. A bottle of water they will take away from you. So what you want to do is take these and put them in your check-in luggage, the big luggage, not in, don't put them in this, what you're taking on the plane. So let's say that you need things on the plane. What do you do? You can bring small quantities. For example, this size, this small size of something you can take on the plane. You can take this on the plane, and you can take this. Why? Because they're under 100 milliliters. So what I usually do is I take the things that I have to have on the plane, like for example medicine or something, and I put them here in a small bag so that they can see them in the airport. So this is a clear bag. And then this will go inside this, which I'm going to carry on the plane. And then when you go through the x-ray machine, this will go through the x-ray machine and they will see it. They will ask you to take this out and place it in a, like a little um, plastic tray along with other things and you'll put it through the machine and then you can put it back in your bag. The same thing goes for your laptop. So when you have your laptop and you have this inside this, for example, when you go through the x-ray machine, you have to take your laptop out and you have to place it separately and put it through the machine. Otherwise, they will stop you and make you go back and you'll cause a traffic jam. Now, if you're going to bring liquids or creams or paste, like toothpaste, and you're going to put it in your large luggage, this, this luggage is going to go under the plane. When it goes under the plane, when we're up in the air, the pressure of the cabin presses on these things, and they can make them expand or contract. So toothpaste, for example, can start to come out. So how do you deal with this? What I do is the following. I take, let's say, let's say this is my toothpaste. I take um, cling wrap or plastic wrap, and I wrap these things tightly like this so that they, they can't squeeze out or they can't expand when they're in the plane. Then I put them in something like this. I usually bring a plastic container that's hard. And I put them inside here and I close this. Now I fill this all up. So I've got this and then maybe for example perfume in here and another cream. I put it all in here and then I close this. If you have anything that could act as a weapon, like scissors or a razor, you cannot carry these things on the plane as well. So you've got to put them in here. Then you can close this. And I usually wrap this too because I don't want it to open. So I'll take this and I'll wrap this as well. And then I put that inside here. And that protects it and will arrive safely. Now, some of you are experienced traveling and, 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 and most of you know your luggage. But there are people who haven't traveled before or who borrow luggage from someone else and so they're not really familiar with what the luggage looks like. And every year, for the past three years, at the FLTA PDO, I have had someone who took the wrong luggage from the airport. And they arrive at the hotel and then they say, oh, this isn't my luggage. 
And then we have a huge problem where we have to go back to the airport, try to find the one that is theirs, exchange the one that isn't theirs, and it's a mess. So we don't want that to happen. Now, why does that happen? It happens because some luggage looks like other luggage. It looks exactly the same. So what I'm recommending is that you take something that you know, like this, and you wrap it here, you put it here, so that when your luggage comes out of the belt in the airport, you recognize this. So even if you don't recognize your luggage, you recognize this. Something else you can do, I have this that my airline gave me. It's yellow, so as soon as I see the yellow, I know that's my luggage. Or you could have something like this. But I don't recommend this because it's hard to see when you're far away. When you're in the airport, the airline is going to put this on your luggage. This is a bar scan, so this is what directs your luggage from one airport to the other. Finally, I want to say about luggage that sometimes luggage gets lost. But it should not get lost if you are not making a connection. So for example, if you're flying from Tunis to Casablanca or from Cairo to Casablanca, it shouldn't happen because you're not changing planes. But if you're flying from Kuwait to Casablanca, you might fly Kuwait, Abu Dhabi, Casablanca. So the, 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 the risk comes in Abu Dhabi because the luggage has to go from a plane in Kuwait to another plane in Abu Dhabi. If the time isn't enough, there isn't enough time, that's where luggage goes missing. It doesn't get lost, but what happens is it's delayed and it comes on a later flight. Now, our travel agent is very experienced, and so she has tried to make sure that there is enough time for the connections, those people who are connecting, that there is enough time so that the luggage is guaranteed to get from one flight to the next flight. In any case, if it should happen, we will get your luggage for you. We will, we will be in contact with the airport and we will make sure that we get your luggage. But what I recommend is just to be on the safe side, that you take maybe one extra outfit inside this and keep, keep this with you so that you have at least one outfit to wear if your luggage is delayed by 12 hours for a day. Now, um, as I said before, when you get to the airport in Casablanca, you will have filled out this card on the airplane and you'll give it to them at passport control. They will stamp your passport and then you're going to proceed to get your luggage. Once you get your luggage, you should leave the airport. When you leave the airport, you should see the Fulbright sign. Then they will put you in a vehicle, like a van or something, and they will take you to the hotel. Okay, well, I hope that was useful information. And if you have any questions, we have the WhatsApp group and we have the Facebook group. Thank you very much.